There are loads of real games around at the moment, and we barely have time to play the ones that actually exist. But that doesn't stop us from looking enviously at fictional games from TV shows and movies and wishing we could get our hands on them. It turns out that without the restrictions of realism, common sense, or actually having to make the game work, you can put together some pretty excellent game ideas. Here are the top six that we'd love to play. Can you handle the rush? All new for 1997, Sugar Rush Speedway. As seen in Disney's recent Wreck-It Ralph, Sugar Rush Speedway is a super adorable, candy-themed kart racer in the Mario Kart mold. Levels are littered with sweet environmental hazards like a breakable gumball machine that floods the track with jawbreakers and explosive cherry bombs that'll spin you off the track, while power-ups let racers fire scoops of ice cream and sweet seeker missiles at each other. What sets the game apart for us is the Bake a Car minigame, where you create your own vehicle by mixing cake ingredients, and the fact that the roster of racers changes daily, giving it excellent replay value. Just don't play it when you're hungry. Is anyone going to eat that car? How was it? I played this new game called Stay Alive. I'm serious, man. I'm sick of shit since Fatal Frame. We would love to play Stay Alive from the 2006 horror film of the same name, just because it's so relentlessly, fascinatingly nonsensical. Sometimes it's a third-person survival horror game, other times it's a first-person shooter. Sometimes it switches randomly between first and third-person perspectives and gives you no means to defend yourself, other times you have an automatic crossbow or dual-wielded nail guns. The feature list is pretty impressive too. Voice recognition. Voice activated? No way. That's next generation technology. Thanks, Malcolm. A robust character creator, at least six player co op, both local and online, as demonstrated by the Scooby Gang here. Oh, and if you die in the game, you die in real life. Right, that's next generation technology. Let's hope, eh? Of course, it turns out the game is being used by dead Hungarian Countess Elizabeth Bathory to kill people for reasons that are never adequately explained, so we'd probably knock a few points off for that, but overall this is a slick, polished third-slash-first-person survival horror-slash-shooter-slash-co-op puzzle game that we'd love to get a chance to play. Plus, Cliffy B served as a consultant on the movie, so if we look closely, we might get some clues about his next project. Oh, my controller is vibrating. Dude, you better drop a rose. No, I'm out of... I'm out of... I'm out of goddamn roses, man. You want excitement? Jump this up your stocking! To be honest, we're not even sure what Bone Storm involves. We've just been convinced by its incredibly aggressive marketing campaign. So tell your folks, buy me, Bone Storm, or go to hell! I mean, it looks like a Mortal Kombat style beat em up, which is fine by us. And also, we've heard the name entry screen is amazing. Ready. Here we go. Ninja Ninja Revolution looks incredible. It combines the rhythm action controls of Dance Dance Revolution with ninjas, which, as the internet has taught us, automatically makes everything better. The arcade cabinet seems to contain some sort of Kinect style camera, as players have to hit certain poses to progress, some of which are actually pretty complicated. Combo. Yeah. Hitting enough moves gives you a combo score, and there's a final boss known as the Nega Ninja to defeat. Getting properly into Ninja Ninja Revolution with a partner looks like great fun, and is exactly the sort of thing arcades need to keep people coming in. Plus, it looks like the moves translate pretty well to real life, too. The world's most realistic video game has one small problem. It's been a little accident. You lose. You die. Bring it on. Possibly the most lazily titled game in the history of the medium, First Person Shooter is a first person shooter. Only it's a virtual reality one in which you wander around environments shooting things and occasionally having sword fights with dominatrices. The actual gameplay looks pretty boring, being a series of uninspiring shooting galleries, first in a warehouse, then in a wild west town. However, the graphics are literally unbelievable. Players are programmed into the system and then appear as astonishingly detailed recreations in-game. Pay attention, worms. Daryl Musashi is going to show us how this game's supposed to be played. I heard he scored 90 consecutive wins on Demon Space Drifter. 91. Oh, and once again, if you die in the game, you die in real life. This time because of a digital killer feeding off male aggression or something. Still, check out those graphics. Hmm. What is this? It's a game. 
Wait, maybe this is the most lazily named game in the history of the medium. The game from Star Trek The Next Generation includes a device that fits over your ears and projects images in front of your eyes for a kind of augmented reality setup. The game itself involves flipping orange discs into purple trumpets, which may not sound like much fun, but every time you get a disc in a trumpet, the game stimulates the pleasure centre of the brain. That part we're fine with. Unfortunately, it then turns out the game is a sophisticated mind control device created by the Qatarians to take over the universe. Whatever, the augmented reality thing is really cool. Plus, if we get really good at it, we might stand a chance of impressing that dreamy Wesley Crusher. What? Come on, it was the 90s. Okay, weird. Uh, so those are the six fictional video games we'd love to play. Did we miss any that you'd love to have a go on? Let us know in the comments and we'll see you next time on Outside Xbox.